Hey there, hello, hello. Welcome to our fun and free Thursday painting. Uh, we are painting the skinny church today. So if you're able to join, say hi. If you're painting along, uh, let me know. And uh, just making sure everything looks okay. So if you're new here, this is your first time watching a fun and free paint party. Um, our uh, goal for the year was to paint more. Or my goal was to paint more and explore different things and um, just paint more, right? And so I started uh, this little Thursday's fun and free quick one hour painting uh, paint party to hold myself a, a little bit accountable and then also just paint with you and hopefully inspire you to paint more, um, give you ideas, tips, techniques, things like that. So um, if you're able to join, uh, let me know. And if you do paint along, uh, share your work. Let me, uh, I'd love to see how you um, create your own art. So. Okay, so let's just double check and make sure everything looks okay. I'm gonna pull you up on my phone so that I can see comments a little bit better too and make sure that I have good volume. Okay, there we go. So let's see, what do we got here? Hi, Carrie. Carrie Lynn from Brandon. This is your first time. Great, welcome. And we've got Carol watching. Awesome, ladies. Okay. Um, let's see, what else do I need to say? So, um, if you'd like to join um, and you didn't know, um, I am creating an event for each of the Thursdays just to give you information about when I'm going to go live. Um, you can um, say you're interested in the event and it will hopefully notify you that we're going live. Um, if you want to um, be notified when I go live, you have to turn on the notifications for Redbird Designs. Um, not necessarily the event, though. I think that's the way it works. Facebook has been changing some things the last couple weeks, so um, we're all just trying to roll with the punches here and the changes. But I think if you hit notify me of all events for Redbird Designs, you'll be notified when I do go live. But I am creating that event as well. Um, also, in the event, there's a link to my website that will um, allow you to download the supply list for the painting and the tracers. So it's a zip file. Um, you input your email and then we'll email you that zip file. Um, the zip file then, you have to extract it or uncompress it. There's three files in there, the supply list, a PDF for the top portion of the tracer and then a PDF for the bottom part. Um, and so that's how you can join if you want that information. Go to the event, click on the link, it'll take you to that, so. Okay, so I'm gonna switch my camera here and we'll get started on this fun, uh, abstracty, bold, um, we've got some fun little scribbles here, so um, the skinny church. So let's move over to the overhead, there we go. Okay. All right, so let's, um, here's the, this is what the tracer is gonna look like. And like I said, it comes in two parts, a top and a bottom. And I am painting on an 11 by 14 uh, mixed media paper. I've taped it down already just to keep it from moving. And then I also like to tape my 
uh, paper down to get a nice clean white edge. It gives us a really great kind of border around my painting, but that's not necessary. You could paint just in a mixed media pad. You could do canvas, 11 by 14, whatever you have on hand will work. Uh, the PDFs are meant for 11 by 14, but you could definitely open those and scale them up or down and uh, play around with that to get the size that you want, whether it's smaller or bigger. Okay. Um, and so once you print those out, we're just going to line them up. You'll be able to see the image through that top uh, copy paper here. You tape it down and then um, align it to your paint surface, whether that's canvas or paper or whatever it is you're painting on. And I just want to make a note that depending on margins of your printer and things like that, you are not going to align it to the edge of the paper, okay? Because it will shift it a little bit, again, depending on your printer and things like that. So I always um, want you to know that you want to align the main element inside your paper. So don't be concerned with your edge. Look at this. Make sure that it's you know equal distance on both sides, where you want it top to bottom, and then tape it down and then you're ready to go. We've got Lynn watching. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Carol. Oh, it's just showing that again. Linda's watching. And hi from Oregon. So I'm going to try your name. And forgive me if I say it wrong, but um, I am thinking Guadalupe. Is that right? Welcome from Oregon. Glad to have you join. Okay, so I've taped it down and then the next step will be to transfer this onto your image. Uh, two ways that you can do that, you can use transfer paper or graphite paper, carbon paper, um, and you can get these at an office supply store they come in a book of maybe 10 or 12 sheets they last forever you can get a lot of different images uh, transferred with these so don't feel like you have to go buy a bunch um, and i typically just get the 11 uh, the paper size um, eight and a half by 11 and i kind of just move it around um, and work with just one they last forever Transfer paper or graphite paper has two sides. It's got a shiny side and a dull side. And so you're gonna wanna make sure that that shiny side is down on your image. Once you've got it aligned, slide that graphite paper underneath. Then you'll just take a pencil or a pen, whatever you have, and lightly with we don't want to go too heavy. We don't want to have those lines on our image super dark, but you also have to have some pressure. So just a light pressure and go over all the elements. Okay. Oh, I got it right. Great. Um, the transfer paper, the black transfer, it, you can get it on Amazon, you can get it at a Staples, um, I don't know if, I'm sure Hobby Lobby or any of the craft stores carry it, but I've always bought it at an office supply store or Amazon. And I'll put a link in the comments for you after the video. Okay, so I've already transferred mine down, or transferred mine on, and we can see that church there. I'll put that aside, 
and let's talk about the paint colors I'm using today. Um, these are just suggestions. Please feel free to use any color that you want. There are no rules in art, right? We can do whatever we want. That's the beauty of it. So if you want to switch out some colors, that's fine. Also, if you have something similar, but it's not the same name or the same brand, that's okay too. Just get close. Great idea, Lynn. She held the paper up to a window for tracing in her mixed media book, which worked great. Yes. Sorry, that I was going to suggest the other way to transfer if you didn't have um, paper, and I completely forgot. I got sidetracked. Let's see if I can find a sharp pencil. Okay, so if you don't have um, transfer paper, graphite paper, uh, what you can do is once you've got this printed out, I've turned it around, um, on the back, right? So this is the front. Flip it over and uh, take a pencil, kind of hold it on the side like this. So we're going to just put some graphite right on the lines, okay? You don't have to do the whole paper, just right where you see those lines. Okay, and so what essentially you're doing is creating your own little graphite piece of paper right on the back here. Again, just go on the areas that you're going to need to transfer. Using your pencil on the side is the easiest, you know, fastest way to do it as opposed to holding it upright. You get more of that uh, lead down faster. So something like this, right? And then once we flip it over, we just trace over and that will um, transfer your image too. So absolutely don't need to buy something. Thanks for reminding me <laughs> about that second method. After I saw Lynn's comment, I was like, oh yeah. Okay, back to paint colors. Um, I've just got a white gesso here just because I don't have a white acrylic um, but white in an apple barrel, any sort of craft paint will work. Um, mine ran out, so I'm trying to use this up. So a white, a black. We're using a burnt umber. Um, not an antique parchment. And then a bonnet blue, a light blue. And I think my original was using an Anita's brand, so in the supply list I might have this, um, called that out, but really just any light blue that you have will work. Uh, I have a khaki color or a light brown, and then a green. I'm using a Deco Art Americana Hauser Medium Green. So just a few colors for this painting, um, which I love having a challenge of using four or five colors and then making it work for the entire thing. Sometimes we want to keep adding color and color and color and there's beauty in just some simple uh, few colors too. Okay, uh, brushes. The good old standard flat for um, putting a lot of paint down. It's great for doing background, so that's what we'll use that for today. And then I've just got a series of different sized rounds, a large, a medium, a small, and um, a liner brush. And then for the fun, uh, just scribbly marks on this, so let me hold this up for you. So I just had a little bit of fun coming around and doing some squiggles and scribbles with my uh, Sharpie or um, graphite pen, journaling pen. And then I also did that around the church. I added some around the window there and all around all of the elements. I really like the way that the pen kind of catches on the paint and the texture and creates this really great like stitching look on the elements and so that's what I was uh, trying to achieve that stitched uh, quilt look maybe and so I 
um, used just a sharpie for this it's an ultra fine point sharpie so nothing special there or if you had kind of like a journaling pen this is a uh, master's touch pen that I got at Hobby Lobby and it's got that archival quality it's for journaling and um, maybe scrapbooking and things like that so this will work as well okay so I've got myself a fresh clean palette paper I don't know if you've seen my other videos but I tend to always have a messy palette here um, but it was getting time to pull out a new one it's always fun to paint with a new palette clean slate all right so we're going to start with that background we're going to get a little bit of white out and just a touch of well a good amount of white a small amount of that black we've got the blue in the background so I'm going to get that out and then I've also mixed in that khaki so I'm using all the colors in all of the elements I've got that blue, the brown, the white in the background. I've got it in the church. And really the grass kind of has some scrapes and small areas of blue. It's kind of hard to see here, but using all of these colors and all of the elements is um, a fun challenge to do. Okay. So let's start with that large flat brush we're going to load that up with um, a lot of white. I want to have white as my main color. And then we will dip it in halfway in blue and halfway in that uh, um, khaki, light brown, excuse me. Um, and for this background, if you've noticed, my brush strokes are all going up and down. And so that's key into getting this really fun, streaky background look. So we want to make sure that our brush strokes are always this way. Okay. And I'm just going to start over here in the corner and do quick little flicks. I don't want to go all the way up and down because that's going to over blend my colors. Okay. So quick little strokes so we get that nice streaky look and then I've got a little I've got some brown and blues here but I want to pull in a little bit more white so I'm going to just go dip my brush into that white and easily or lightly drag that white into that color and lighten it up just a little bit so lots of white on your brush a little dip in that blue a little dip in that khaki color just quick little brush strokes up and down. And I'm gonna go over my grass here. I'm just gonna drag that color straight down instead of trying to cut in around it because my grass will cover up those little streaks down there. The whole point is to get this fun streaky background. So we're just gonna go back and forth with these colors. Again, short brush strokes. Don't try and go too long because then the colors will start to over blend and by the time you get to the top you'll have this brownie blue color that's a, a blend. We want to see those individual colors. So lots of white and I accidentally got my brush into that blue but that's alright. I'm going to go grab some of that khaki and do quick little brush strokes. Don't want to over blend. Okay. So my sky is a little bit darker than my original. If you've noticed, it's a little more blue. It's a little more um, brown, but that's okay. We're going to just continue going through this process all the way to the other side. dropping in those colors and then once I get all the way to the other side I'm going to come back 
with just white and lighten it up a little bit. So we've got this really fun streaky background. Okay, and now this is starting to somewhat dry so I can come back in here and add in that um, white and lighten it up. So we've got in my original we've got some really thick streaks of white so it's lightened up that background and it's going to help push that background to the back so that our uh, star of the picture is the church. So we're going to just grab just that white now with a light pressure. We don't want it to over blend with the, what's already there if, in case it's wet. Just drag that white in. just different areas just take a you know decide where you want it to be light and if you want a darker background with more blue and more brown you can do that too so you can see how that instantly just lightened up my background a little bit so I'm gonna just get a little more white here and add just a couple more streaks When you're doing a background like this, it is, um, well, I recommend that you try and move at a little bit faster pace um, and keep it really loose. Don't overthink it because the moment we start to slow down and we're like, oh, there's a little too much brown there, and then we're trying to um, maybe fix this and fix that, the analytical side of our brain is going to start to pop in and go, oh, well, this and this, and then we're over blending and we're taking too long. And so if you go fast, you keep it loose, um, you get more natural streaking and that creative side can come out a little bit better um, or more. And it pushes that analytical, the, maybe some OCD perfectionism out the window. So my recommendation to you is keep your backgrounds loose by going a little bit faster. Okay. So let's put the color in our church. We've got, um, we're going to start at the top here. We're just going to work our way down. The other thing about this painting that I want to point out to you is it's very loose in the fact that all of my lines are imperfect. We have very bold brush strokes and they're wobbly, my church is not all straight, my uh, lines on my walls aren't straight, and that's what makes this such a great fun painting is we're just putting some lines on there and it's um, very loose. Okay, I just want to make sure that you're still okay. Okay. So let's start at the top here. And for the roof and the cross, I am using a the burnt umber. And I'm gonna grab a medium round for that. load our brush up and we're just going to fill in this um, roof line here. Okay. And then let's go add the thickness to the cross here. Okay, so while this is wet, let's go add some texture to this roof line here. Let's dip our brush into that 
uh, khaki color and streak some of that through the roof here. Just quick little brush strokes, light pressure, we're just depositing just a little bit of paint and small little lines up there. I'm going to also add some to the cross. Okay. And then let's add one more color up there. Let's grab some of that white. And so let me just show you here. I've got that burnt umber on my brush and I've just barely tipped it into that uh, white. Just want a small amount of the white on my brush and then quick little flicks of your wrist will help just do a light deposit of that color. So we get these streaks now inside of that roof. Okay. While we have that burnt umber, let's go and do the second roof. No need to wash your brush. Just go grab some burnt umber back on to your brush. And same thing, we're going to dip that brush, just the very tip of it, into that khaki. We're going to streak some of the khaki through that roof. We'll go grab some white. And it just gives us this great streaky texture in our roof. Okay. So we're going to move down to the door while we're working with this burnt umber. Let's go fill in this door and I do have a window in the door but I'm just going to do the entire door right now in this burnt umber and we'll come back with a second coat and lots of different layers that will allow us to put that window back in and even the doorknob. So I'm not going to streak this quite yet like I did the uh, roofs because uh, we do want to put that window in um, and we'll, we'll add some detail to the door when we add the window and such in that regard. Okay, we're going to give our brush a quick wash. So we're going to move into using the khaki and the white. So I'm going to load my brush up with the white, I'm going to grab some of that khaki, and that's a fair amount. And we're just going to let the brush strokes combine those two colors. Work our way around the window here. I do want to mention that this video is going to be recorded and available for replay. I am a pretty fast painter and I don't want you to get discouraged. If you can't keep up, you'll be able to watch it on the replay and pause and then press start when you're ready. So go at your own pace. Don't feel like you have to paint as fast as I am. Don't let that discourage you. Okay, so I was just bouncing back and forth at that point with the white and the khaki just to get this light colored brown here for the top. And um, I'm gonna do the same now with the bottom. Lots of white lots of khaki and we'll fill in the bottom part of this church. This is just the first layer. We're going to come back with lots of 
just a few more uh, layers that will help give us that fun streaky look in the church as well. Start with just our first layer here. And as you're painting, if you go inside the windows or you, you know, accidentally put a brush stroke through that window or whatever it may be, don't worry about it because we will be coming back with a layer for that and it will be easily covered up. Great thing about painting is everything is fixable with just another layer. So we've got all sorts of different shades of brown happening because every time I dip my paint brush into that paint I'm picking up maybe just a little bit more white or a little bit more brown and so again that's the look we're going for in this painting is very random, very streaky, bold brush strokes. Oh, let's paint inside this circle here. I was thinking it was a window and it's not. So as I was talking and trying to paint at the same time, my brain went automatic window right there and that's actually a wreath that we'll put in there. So we do wanna see that covered up. You should still be able to see your outline um, through that color white and this khaki color are pretty light so I can still see a hint of that circle there. I feel like this church is a little bit more wonky this time. I'm a little bit off kilter but that's all right. Okay. So let's get our windows filled in. We're gonna use a white and a blue. I'm gonna load up our brush with white. I'm still just using a medium round. And then I'm gonna just do a quick little dip in the blue. I don't want too much blue right now. So this is where we can clean up any of our window edges that might have accidentally got filled in. We can reshape them a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to also put a little square window right in here. Let's go put our first coat on our grass. I'm using the Hauser Medium Green color for this. I'm going to use that, still sticking with just that medium round. Oh, excuse me. And this is going to require a few coats, so um, if you've watched me before, you'll know that I'm always letting you know that it's all about the layers. Each layer adds more texture, each layer adds more depth, and so the first layer always looks terrible. They say a painting always looks terrible before it looks good, which is true because that first layer 
Maybe the color doesn't cover completely. Maybe it's light and still you can see through it, but each layer is going to add just a little more. Just get a little more closer to that finished product with every layer. Okay, so we've covered the entire bottom area in this green. It looks pretty flat. We can still see some of that canvas or paper popping through. And again, trust me, it's going to get better. So what we're going to do now, before we move on, and while this is still wet, let's add some shadow and darkness to our um, grassy hill here. I'm going to pull some of this grain off to the side and then I'm going to go dip my brush in a little bit of that burnt umber and let's darken that color up just a little bit. We're going to get a nice, or what we're wanting is a nice dark green color. There we go. So you can see it's a little bit darker, not too bad. Let's grab just a little more. There we go. If you're just looking for a shade darker here. And then once we've got that, I'm going to put that dark color along the back edge here where my horizon is meeting my sky. And then I'm also going to focus on around the edge of my church and along the bottom here because um, we need to create a shadow in essence to make it look more 3D. So one thing you want to decide on is where you want your sun to come from or your light source. And so for me, my light source typically um, comes from this corner and shines down. It's just how I paint. It's where it seems natural to me. If yours is over here, and which is fine, and it's coming down this way, you're going to create a shadow on this side of your building. So wherever it is that your sun is coming or your light source is, that's where you want to put some of this dark green. So we're going to add just a brush stroke to the back here. I'm also going to add one to the back, just a brush stroke back there. I just need a little more darkness here. So I'm going to add a little more darkness to my green color. And use that to create my shadow. So again, my light's coming from here. So I'm going to add some streaks on the, along the side here. Just starting that brush right at the edge of my church and just streaking it out. Okay, and then also down along the bottom. Nice bold brush strokes and bringing it down to the edge here. So we're going to let this dry and then we're going to come back and we're going to add just a little bit more um, texture to it. We'll add some squiggles for some grass and some different things. We'll also add a highlight to it. So we're going to let that dry. Okay. It's funny this when I see this in the video, this looks almost turquoisey, but it's not. I wonder if it's the way this, the light is hitting it. Maybe it's just my, my display. Okay, we're going back to the top here, and we want to add some lightness to our church. Whoops, I'm going to get a little bit more white out. Still just using my medium round for this. I'm going to come in and just drop some streaks, just like we did with the background. Just kind of play around with where I want that. 
and I'm also thinking about my light source on my church as well right so my lights coming from this way this side of my church is going to be a little bit lighter than that so that's also what I'm thinking when I'm putting my streaks of white in if it's gotten too light or you're not liking how the streaks look, you can always go grab just a little bit of that um, khaki on your brush and kind of blend that in. We've got some fun streaks going on here. I'm just streaking that paint throughout. So as loose and fun as this painting can be, it can also um, be a little bit of a challenge because our brain wants to make sense of our brush strokes and sometimes they just don't, right? So a good way to do a painting like this is do it in small chunks and always take a step back and get a perspective on it. Um, you know, mine's taped down so I can't do it, but if you're working on a canvas or if you're working in a mixed media pad and you're just struggling with maybe how this looks, um, you know, you're not sure because you're looking at it on the side or you're just constantly focusing on maybe a brush stroke you don't like, Sometimes just being able to hold your painting up like this at a distance, even an arm length away, can help you get a different perspective on this. And then you start to see it in a different way. And it's the brush strokes that you were concerned about are okay, right? So um, I have the ability to see this from a, um, a downward perspective. Um, because I can look in my phone while I'm doing the live so I can always see kind of where my brush strokes are so if I'm feeling a little bit um, I'm struggling in an area I look at my phone I'm checking my comments and I can see oh you know what that's okay you know so I always recommend to just take a minute do this even if you can't lift your painting up take a picture of it and turn around don't look at your painting turn around with your phone um, and look at it through that and that helps tremendously too and it can help point out areas maybe you do want to fix it up or you're thinking oh that's okay so take the time to look at it in a different perspective especially when we're doing really abstracty streaky things like this it can sometimes be a struggle so let's go add some fun streaks down below So my goal here is to add some streaks that just help lighten up my church. But also to show some of that khaki coming through, peeking through in different areas. You can always, you know, just do this. Um, or if you want, you can kind of blend it in and just do a quick little squiggle and that kind of gives you these really blended brush strokes too if you didn't want to see just a streaky look. Let's add some uh, just squiggling it, blending that in.
Okay. So just keep adding some white on top of that brown in areas that you want. And then also at some point, you just gotta say, okay, that's good because the next layer might change how it looks completely. So again, if you're struggling, if you don't like how it looks, just stop and work on that next layer. Okay, so I'm good here. I'm actually gonna just lighten this up a little bit, right up on here. There we go. All right, so let's um, move into adding some texture to these windows. I have taken that burnt umber and outlined all of my windows, and so we're gonna move to just a smaller brush for that. Not necessarily a liner, but just a small round. Um, I think this is a six, but all manufacturers use different numbers for different sizes, so. Something small. We'll go get some of that burnt umber on our brush, and I'm just gonna lightly encompass my window here with that burnt umber. Okay. I'll also pull my roof out just a little bit. Okay, and then we also have this window, so I'm going to go up and around it. Then let's give it a little ledge here. And then let's come down here and go around these windows. And then I'm going to take this and also just kind of outline my church in this, but also do it in a very quick, kind of streaky way. So almost quick little brush strokes on each side, just to give some definition to the edges. So really broken lines, nothing um, straight. Just to help define those edges just a little bit. Okay, so let's, since we've got that burnt umber, let's add some texture to our door. Let's go dip our brush into that, um, khaki color and I'm going to add some streaks of that. Okay, then I'm going to go grab some of the white and do the same. There we go. Okay, let's go grab our um, medium round again and we're going to add some more texture to our windows. So I'm going to start by grabbing just the white and I'm going to add a brush stroke in. I'm just going to layer that white in on all my windows. Okay, and then I'm going to grab that blue and in just a little bit of a different area add a little bit of blue. Just one brush stroke. Okay. I'm going to wipe that blue off, but not necessarily brush it off, so I'm going back to the white. 
And then I'm going to grab some of that burnt umber. Just a little dip in that. And what we're doing is we're just creating a light brown, kind of a dark color. Some windows have a little bit of a dark color in them. You don't see white entirely. So kind of on the bottom, I'm going to just add a dark. Alright, let's go grab some of that white. We're just going to lay that white right down in the middle. Just kind of swirl those colors a little bit. more blue here, streak a little bit through there, add a little blue on that side. They're almost like stained glass windows. And then let's add some blue in our window on our door there. Okay. All right, I am going to work on my wreath here. And so for the wreath, um, I'm using a small round and I wanna use this uh, green here. We're just gonna use that solid green. If you wanted a lighter color green or to mix the light green and a dark green in there, you could. I'm just gonna use that one color. And what I'm going to do is just with a very light hand, kind of just give myself that circle back. I can kind of see a hint of it through my church here. So using very light pressure, just outlining that circle for myself. And then I'm going to use the brush in a way that creates almost a little stamp, okay? so. What I mean by that is, let me grab a scrap sheet of paper here. So instead of using a brush stroke, what I'm gonna do to create the little petals on my wreath is I'm gonna place, so if this is my circle, I'll try and do it a little bit bigger because I know in that small little area, it's kind of hard to see. So I want my brush to point away from my circle and then I'm just going to dab and I get that little circle so it's kind of at an angle we're going to go the other way with it and just dab so we're just going to continue that motion we're just dabbing our brush kind of around that circle creating that wreath so just a dab and it creates that cute little petal. No, no pulling, no pushing. We're just up and down. So a little stamp, I guess, would be a good description. The more you press down or the harder you press down, the bigger petal you'll get. And go ahead and let them kind of connect, stack them on top of each other. Gonna work your way around and don't be afraid to move your art to fit your brush strokes. Mine's taped down so I can't rotate my paper, but if I could, I would. So we want to have them all go in the same way too. They're working their way around where they're gonna meet up again. Okay. 
And then let's go dip our brush into some of that white and add just a little bit of white to some of the leaves. We want to highlight those. We don't want it to just be all green. If we add some of this white, it looks like there's maybe some shine on some of the leaves and it really just adds some dimension to that wreath. I'm not touching all of them, just every few. Okay. Let's go give our brush a quick wash. Actually, I'm going to grab my medium brown, so we're going to go add some texture to our grass. So I'm going to go straight into that dark hauser or medium hauser green, and starting at that shadowy area, I'm going to take my brush and kind of do this. I'm going to create these uh, kind of zigzag or squiggly lines coming from that. I'm going to do that on both sides. I don't want to see straight lines. I kind of want that little wiggle in my line to help me show that that's grass. Okay. And then we're going to, oh, I need a little bit more. We're going to create a light green. So I'm going to pull some green off to the side, we'll grab some white, I'm going to actually grab a little bit of this um, khaki, Okay, and then using just the tip of my brush, again I'm going to just kind of create these, it's almost like you're signing your name, right, we're just kind of up and down, or it's a quick little brush stroke, just adding little dabs here and there for some lightness. I am going to go along the back on this side. This is where my sun is coming from, so I want this line here to be lighter. And then come in with those squiggly marks here. It's almost like you're signing your name quick, quick, and you drag it out, or it's a little heartbeat symbol you're creating. Okay, and let's go dip into that uh, burnt umber and we're going to create kind of stairs or a path here. So we're going to just streak some of the dark that way. Then let's grab the light and streak that in with it. We get that fun little path line going. Okay, and let's go back. We're going to just bounce between these colors and just kind of tap those colors in with each other. We've got the regular green. We've got that light green. We can also bring in some of the dark. Bouncing around between the colors, dropping in some color here and there. There we go. Okay, so we're just going to go grab some just white now. I'm going to streak some white in my path just to lighten it up so we know that it's there. And then for the white, I'm going to also come in and create a little white streak right up in here. The sun is hitting that area and we've got some shine going on there. Okay guys, we are almost done with this painting. So very loose, very abstract. Um, and now we're going to go and grab our um, pen. So 
so we're going to end it with the pen. I'm going to grab my Sharpie here. Hopefully this is a good one. Yep, I think so. We'll see how long it lasts. Sharpies are good for so long and then they seem to dry out. You have to put the cap on, let it uh, recharge, I guess. <laughs> um, but so to begin with, we want to make sure everything's dry. And I think we're good here. I think that's still, we're going to have the grass. So we're going to work our way along the top and then we'll work down. So let's start with the um, church here. Along the cross, I'm just, let me back up. When I'm doing something like this and I really want it to be very um, sketchy looking or scribbly, I hold my pen by the tip like this because I have less control over that if I'm holding it up here like this which then gives me those very natural scribbly marks. They're not forced. Um, my pen can kind of do what it wants and I'm just guiding it to the areas that I want it to be, right? If you hold your pen like this, your memory, your muscle memory of how you write and how we draw and everything like that is going to not allow you to get those really great scribbly marks, natural scribbly marks. So I recommend you hold your pen like this. It's kind of scary at first, but it's really fun. Um, and so we're just going to guide it around and drag it around our church. We're trying to get that scribbly stitch look. Come back around. Some areas it might pick up, some it might not. It's going to pick up on some of that texture of your painting, so it might catch a line here and there. Okay, so let's do it again. And I, I do it a couple times. I go slow once, I go fast. I, you know, it's hard to go fast. You want it to look good, but the faster we go, the better our scribbles are. I just kind of drew some lines across my cross up there and then I went under the um, roof okay and I'm gonna also go around my window a couple times go on the top of the roof here draw a couple lines there I'm going to bring some lines in here, bring some in here, and then we'll come around this window. Go around the windowsill. So you can add as much or little of the scribbles as you want. I also created a frame inside this window, but my I think my paint might be still a little bit wet, so I'll come back to do that later. I'm going to go under the roof here with a couple lines. Come down. Go around this window. Just go around everything that you want and as many scribbles as you want. Just keep going over areas to get new scribbles. Go around the bottom here. I'm gonna wait on my wreath there. It's still pretty wet, so we'll hold off on that. Let's go around this window. And I'm going to create just a little doorknob there with my pen. Okay. And then I'm going to start, let's see, this is pretty dry over here. So I'm going to start and go 
all the way around my painting and create a fun scribbly border. I'm going to hold off along the bottom because it's still a little wet down there. And I know once I push my pen through any wet paint, it's going to stop working for a while. So we'll just hold off on that. Okay, so I did a couple straight lines. Now I'm gonna try and do a couple little wiggles in there. I'm gonna do a little loop-de-loop. -loop. Gonna catch on that paint again and just do some fun stuff there. So let's go on top of the grass here and outline the, the hill. And so just add little squiggles wherever you want. And maybe you don't want to do the curly cues and the squiggles and you just want to do some fun lines, that's okay too. Okay, so let's see if I can go through here, put that frame in there. like we're dry down here now. It's the great thing about acrylic paints. They dry super fast. Okay, and then I'm also going to add some lines in where my path is here. And then we can also just add some little squiggles in our grass to kind of indicate little tufts of grass growing here. And then last, let's see if this is dry, we can go around our wreath. And there we go. There is our abstract skinny little church using bold brush strokes, squiggly lines, imperfect um, lines. You can see I have a slight little lean. It's a little crooked, but I like how that turned out this time. So let me remove my tape and I'll bring it up closer so you can see all my great squiggly marks. So if you guys paint this, make sure to post your uh, pictures, share your art. With doing bold and more abstract painting like this, no piece of art is going to be the same. Everyone's is going to be different. We're all going to have different streaks. We're all going to have different squiggles. Um, and it's so fun to see. So I encourage you to share your art. As scary as that might sound, if you're nervous about sharing your art, I would um, encourage you to just send me a message and let me see. I won't share it unless you give me permission, but it gives us confidence to cre keep creating art when we share it with others. So we lose that fear and we want to just keep creating and we keep sharing and it's just a great snowball effect. So you can see all my squiggles in their imperfection. And that is our Thursday's fun and free paint party with the Skinny Church. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you find time to paint and get your creative therapy in. And I look forward to next week's painting. We're doing the Easter eggs. And if you have any questions whatsoever, um, you can uh, message me and I'll help out. You can 
ask your questions in the comments of the video. I do try and keep my eye on the video. I might not answer you right away, but I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. And I hope you guys have a great week. Have a great weekend. Spring is almost here. So hopefully you have a warm weekend too. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining. Um, and I look forward to next week's tutorial and seeing you again. Have a great week. Bye. Thanks, Lynn. Talk to you later. Thanks, Carrie. Talk to you guys later. Bye.